Now, I'm going to pretty much stay to the notes unless the Lord goes off, but I, I really felt like the Lord wanted to minister to us about rejection. Anybody been rejected here by people? Okay, uh, all of us. I think there's no one that avoids the subject. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a, a negative fruit of the flesh that seems to go around quite frequently, right? Can you turn my mic down? I'm, I'm a lot louder than Jane, so just turn me down just a little bit just to, so I don't knock you all down off the seats. Okay, that's good. So rejection, repentance, and renewal, I titled this. Um, when we get rejected, there, you know, sometimes it's, I'm going to get into it in the notes, and I might repeat myself. I might get ahead of myself. Is that okay? Sometimes we have to deal with the rejection in our life. I don't think sometimes. I think all the time we need to, re, we need to deal with rejection in our life because it creates pain in our life. And how we deal with it is how we have victory. Amen. So rejection is huge, has a huge effect on us, on our lives, in every area, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally, every aspect. Do you, do you agree with me on that? It's huge. So we, God has the answer to rejection. You know, sometimes we like to bury rejection most of the time because it hurts. It's painful. Nobody wants to go where there's pain. So I really believe God wants to give us an illustration here through the life of David to understand a little bit more about rejection, about how we've been treated by people. We've been hurt. We've been abused. So many times we've been rejected by others, and it's no fault of our own, but how we respond to rejection can put more of the blame, you know, uh, Yep, back on us. That's, it's our choice on how we respond to that rejection. Now, many times we just don't know how to respond, and we just need knowledge. And that's what I want to go over here. And, and many of us have been delivered from rejection and have come quite a ways, myself included. But it's a lifelong process many times because we have to learn how to handle the bumps, as in Donna's word from last week. There's going to be bumps in the road, but we need to begin to learn how to rejoice in the midst of the attacks of the enemy so that we aren't sidetracked, right? We're supposed to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily sidetracks us. And so we have to learn the knowledge of how to deal with the enemy and his lies the sand ballots and the Tobias, so that we can have victory. So let me stick to the notes here so we can get through this, because I want to pray for us so that there's maybe some areas God will expose in your mind, in your heart this morning, or when you're listening to this message on YouTube that, or on Facebook, whichever it is, God will give you grace to be free from the pain of the rejection, the trauma, and even torment that it has in your life. The Lord has provided the answer to free us from all the pain and all the bondage of rejection and the trauma, freedom from any trauma that we are experiencing. You believe that? His word is true, right? So the prophet Isaiah declare, declares uh, what the Messiah, Jesus Christ, has done for us in Isaiah 53, and I want to read that right now. Isaiah 53, 4, verse 4 says, Surely he has borne our griefs, that means our sicknesses, our weaknesses, and our distresses. And he's carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God. All right, David, no doubt, he's a good example of someone who experienced the pain of rejection. King David, I, I really feel like there were some areas in his life that were undealt with, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, no doubt this rejection was left undealt with him in his life, and it resulted in the sin with Bathsheba and the murdering of Uriah, his, her husband, to cover up the trail of sin. Have you ever thought about that? David is a, a man after God's own heart, it says. And God picked him and put Saul out of the picture because Saul was a man after people's hearts, after the recognition of man. But yet David fell for the enemy's temptation committed adultery with Bathsheba, 
And then when he was about to be found out, he had Uriah, her husband, sent to the front line so that he might die in battle to cover his trail of sin. And I always thought about that. How can a man after God's own heart end up doing that? And it's an issue we have to think about. Um, the Lord's given us all things, he says, that pertain to life and godliness. But many times, because of ignorance, we suffer from undealt rejection and the pain stemming from our past. Okay? Godly knowledge will bring freedom. Amen? And I'll show you that here in a little bit. King David's sins were exposed by the prophet Nathan, if you remember. And upon being confronted, David broke down in complete remorse and into deep repentance. And it's illustrated in Psalm 51 where he wrote, and I'm going to read the whole psalm, okay? You ready for this? This is his cry. This is his penitent heart. This is him really saying, you know, I messed up, God. Show me the way out of this. And he put it to a song to sing in the tabernacle of all places where, where the presence of God was because he wanted everything out in the open. He says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your steadfast love. There it starts out right there. According to God's amazing love. Wow, where would we be without that? According to the multitude of your tender mercy and loving kindness, blot out my transgressions and wash me thoroughly and repeatedly from my iniquity and my guilt and cleanse me and make me wholly pure from my sin. He's, he's not trying to make excuses here, is he? He says, for I am conscious of my transgressions and I acknowledge them. My sin is ever before me. And against you, Lord, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and faultless in your judgment. Verse 5, Behold, I was brought forth in a state of iniquity, of sinfulness. My mother was sinful who conceived me, and I too, I am sinful. Behold, you desire truth in the inner being. Make me, therefore, to know wisdom in my inmost heart. Purify me with hyssop. This symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ being applied upon the altar with hyssop. So cleanse me with the blood is prophetically speaking of the blood of Jesus Christ. Cleanse me, purify me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Amen? Ceremonially, wash me, and I shall be, in reality, be whiter than snow. Now see, this is something we don't believe many times. We think, okay, God's forgiven us of our sins, but I still remember my past, right? We can't, we can't let the enemy do that anymore. We've got to stop him in his tracks right now. If we want to be used by God, we want to please God, and we want to bless God, we've got to say no more. No matter how many times you and I have fallen in sin, we can go back under the blood of Jesus Christ, not just as a license to sin. That's called licentiousness. In the Bible, that's greasy grace, all hyper grace, which is very popular now. We have the fear of God and the love of God both. It's a wonderful duo. It's better than Batman and Robin. <laughs> it's, it's the dynamic duo, the fear of God and the love of God. You want the love of God? You got to take the fear of God. You want to be a, have the fear and reverence of God? You got to remember that he's a loving God, Right? Mercy and truth are married together, right? So, where am I at? Verse 8. Make me to hear joy and gladness and be satisfied. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. He's talking about discipline. He lost his child out of Bathsheba that she became pregnant. And it was a very difficult time. God broke some bones. God allowed some things to happen. The prayer of the Lord's prayer is, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. So do you think God sometimes will lead us into temptation? Sometimes he will discipline us. Sometimes he will, he will allow circumstances for our betterment. Right? Okay, y'all looking at the notes. I'm trying to make eye contact. We'll get there. <laughs> Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my guilt and iniquities. Verse 10, I love this part. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew, renew a right 
persevering and steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. And restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. See, the whole point in this is, as you said last week, Donna, our cup would run over and be tipped over to others. And that we wouldn't allow the circumstances of life, I don't have it up here, but we wouldn't allow the the bumps in the road, that's what it was, to take us off the plan that God has for us. You see? We had to bend in humility, right. That's what we mean when we talk about brokenness. It's talking about humility, you know, getting ourselves out of the picture, making it all about him and not about us. At the same time, though, he's made us. He's created us to be a light in this world, to be a, a new creation and old things passed away so that we can, that the life of Christ can be alive in us. He doesn't take our personality and kill it. He takes the flesh and kills it. <laughs> if we let him take up your cross daily and follow him, and then we become more like him that way. Verse 14, deliver me from blood guiltiness and death, condemnation. You know, he did wrong. He knows it. O oh God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness, your righteousness and your justice. Amen. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall flow forth with praise. For you delight not in sacrifice, or else I would give it. I mean, it's easy to kill an animal and give it to God. You find no pleasure in the burnt offering. In verse 17, he says, my sacrifice... The sacrifice that's acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, broken down with sorrow for sin and humbly and thoroughly. This is the Amplified Classic. It kind of gives you an understanding of the the, the Hebrew in there. It's broken down. Our heart is broken down with sorrow for sin and humbly and thoroughly penitent. Sorry for our sins. Changed. Changed another direction. Such, O God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of righteousness, justice, and right with burnt offerings and with whole burnt offering. Then bullocks will be offered upon your altar. He brings it back around to not just about himself, but about the place where Christ is going to come back and rule and reign as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so Jerusalem is the place. And we are, basically, we are the Jerusalem, if you think about it, because Holy Spirit dwells within us. Holy Spirit dwells within us. And He doesn't leave when we mess up. He doesn't leave when someone, uh, when someone, when someone gives us a, a, a words that reject us. He's still present within us, but he wants us to be able to be strong and weather the storms of the pain and the trauma that's associated with the words that people say to us, right? Sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but words will never hurt me? Uh Uh-uh. That's not true. We know that words hurt, don't they? And they hurt big time, big time. And God's going to free some of us from that. Maybe all of us. It's a process. It's a lifetime process that we're going through. David, no doubt, I believe he had rejection issues that had not been taken care of. And this is my personal belief, okay? I'm not going to prove this to you from any scripture other than I know he was the youngest of seven brothers. I was the youngest of three, so I understand getting picked on. All right? You know, some of you are the younger ones you know. All right? Uh, then also his father brought him to Samuel lastly after his brothers. He didn't even qualify. You know, he was just a runt. Go take care of the sheep, kind of. You know, I'm not sure all this is exactly the way it happened, but something happened in David that got him off track, okay? Then his brothers accused him of having an evil heart on the battlefield. He came up to bring them lunch, remember? And they said, oh, you're here just to look at the gore, you know? And, uh, you know, that's, that's... that's rejection. And King Saul also, that's the big one. 
King Saul hated him and tried to kill him repeatedly, which forced him to be in exile and be distressed. And then lastly, when they brought the tabernacle into Jerusalem, into the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Ark of the Covenant, into the tabernacle, and they were dancing, and he, he got so excited that some of his clothes started to come off. I've seen these people in Africa. I saw one brother dress, dance so hard, his shirt started ripping apart. <laughs> and would to God we get that excited <laughs> and dance before the Lord. But his wife, Michael, despised him for his success when he was dancing. David, no doubt, I believe he had pain from all the rejection he experienced. And so here's my question. Why did the man, after God's own heart, commit adultery with Bathsheba and then have her husband Uriah killed to cover it up? I really think it's most likely from the pain of rejection that had not been dealt with. Psalm 107, verses 1 through 20, they, it depicts the deliverance of God for his people. I would recommend reading all 20 verses. But in verse 20, let's read that one. He sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them from their destructions. And in the Hebrew, that word destruction means pit, pitfall. And if I had time, I would read the entire chapter of Lamentations chapter 3, where Jeremiah talks about all the woes he's gone through, but in the middle of it, he begins to speak the positive things about God. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies are new every morning. Amen? Hallelujah. Sometimes we go through rough times, but God can carry us through because he's faithful and true. But it's up to you and me to draw from him. It's up to you and me to receive forgiveness from him, to receive confidence from him, to receive peace from him, and joy, and love, and happiness. That's blessing, is happiness. So he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction, from the pits they have fallen, the slippery slopes that they had fallen into. Amen? He's so for us. He's not against us. He wants us to have victory. Amen? Psalm 51 and Psalm 38, they're psalms where David, he doesn't blame anybody's on his sin on anybody else or anyone who caused him pain, but he opens up about his failures and he follows up with deep, 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 deep repentance. It's so good. In Psalm 38, David, he speaks about the chastening or the disciplining of the Lord. And in verse 18, he says, For I will declare my iniquity... And I will be in anguish over my sin. So we got to take responsibility. Even if people have hurt you, if you hang on to it, when you know the forgiver, you know the merciful one, he's been merciful to you and forgiven you of your sins. If you don't forgive others of their sins, then you actually close the door to the healing that God has for you. The Lord's Prayer. Forgive those Forgive my trespasses, Lord, as well as those who have trespassed against me. So, forgive my sins, Lord, but also forgive those who have sinned against me. And if, if you can't give that up, well, in your own natural strength you can't, really, because it's usually eye for an eye, right? But he wants us to be able to know there's power inside of you. Holy Spirit power the blood of Jesus can break every single stronghold in our lives that robs us of peace. Amen? Okay. In the same psalm, in verse 15 and 16, it says, For in you, Lord, I hope. You will hear, O Lord, my God. For I said, Hear me, lest they rejoice over me, lest when my foot slips, they exalt themselves against me, for I am ready to fall, and my sorrow is continually before me. So the psalmist here decides to ask God for help. Amen? In verse 21 and 22 says, Do not forsake me, O Lord, O my God. Be not far from me. Make, hay, make haste. Make hay. Yeah, we can make hay. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. 
I think many times we forget that he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's given it all for you and I. Y'all cold? Can't help it. Sorry. <laughs> Air conditioning is bigger than we need. But, uh, so we need to pack the house out so we could use the air conditioning, right? Amen. Amen. Oh, make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Knowledge or knowing where rejection or pain has entered into our life is the key to our deliverance. And that's true, whether it entered through our sin or through the sin of someone else. When we can see where this rejection has come into our lives, then we can deal with it. But many times we want to cover it up. That's the natural uh, defensive mechanism that we have. Our brain sometimes will even block out the rejection or the abuse or whatever we've experienced. And God wants us to open up our hearts to see where this came in, not so that we can hurt again, but so that we can get the splinter out. How many of you got a splinter and you just don't want to mess with it? It just hurts too much and you let it go. Well, what happens? It festers and then the body begins to build up nasty stuff to get rid of it, right? (laughs) And it hurts, and it can end up worse than if you would have taken the painful time to dig the splinter out in the first place. Proverbs 11.9 says, The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous will be delivered. I'm telling you, Through the knowledge of the Lord, we can be delivered. We don't have to suffer under the pain. That's why we pray for revelation. We pray for wisdom. We pray for understanding. Revelation, wisdom, and knowledge, they will reveal the source or the sources of our pain. Okay? So, below is a list of areas of rejection and pain that may be under... Uh, maybe under or within our lives, which may cause many uh, increased negative problems. As we read through this list, let us pray the Holy Spirit will give revelation, wisdom, and understanding to which of these areas we need deliverance from. And But before we pray, we got to realize that when God shows us someone or some event that's brought us pain, then we must forgive that person and let go of blaming God for our pain. All right? If you blame God for your pain for somebody else, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. And that's just what the enemy wants us to do. It's what he did in the garden. God didn't say, you know. We got to put our faith in in him solely and trusting in him that he is good and he intends good for our lives. Amen? Remember, the I already mentioned this, forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us. And Jesus also said, if you don't forgive others, then my Father in heaven will not forgive you. Now, if you've been hurt by somebody, if you've been abused by somebody, you don't have to love them. I mean, you don't have to like them, actually. But you need to have the love of God toward them, which is unconditional forgiveness. It's the only way you'll be free. We have to It's not an easy thing at all. We don't have to let them into our lives again to abuse us again, all right? You hear what I'm saying? But we do need to forgive. And it's imperative that we forgive because if we don't it brings a root of bitterness in us. And it comes in and destroys us. It's deep root. We've got to open ourselves up and say, God, take it out of my heart. Help me to love that person. I don't have to be around them. I don't have to like them. But help me to love them and forgive them and not hold it against them. Let my mouth not speak negative words about them anymore from this day forward. That's a prayer we should have so that we can be free from that. When we go through the bumps in the road, we need to begin to, as Jane was saying earlier, and I'm learning this more and more the older I get, we need to praise him and thank him in the midst of challenging circumstances. When things go differently than we expected, 
when I go to work on plumbing here in the barn and it's like 10 times worse than I thought it was going to be, instead of going, oh, why is this happening to me? <laughs> I need to say, I'm learning to go, thank you, Lord. I praise you. You're teaching me how to overcome and persevere, and, and you're teaching me how to have be long-suffering <laughs> and gentle, right? Not angry. That's another thing. Anger many times is a, is a result of unforgiveness. We get angry at people because we won't forgive them. We feel justified. And you can feel justified. And God is a God of justice, I'm telling you. Righteousness and truth are the, are the foundation of his throne. Justice is something he will take care of. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and we need to understand that. Did you turn the air up or down? No? It just finally kicked on. Okay. It's cold in here. So God is, God is giving us a, a little clue here that he will take care of the pain if we will let him. He will take care of vindicating you if we will let him. If you try to do it yourself, you will end up in even more pain. Does anybody understand that? Okay, so here's some of the negative signs that we have with undealt with pain and rejection. Now, before we go through this, I want to pray. So, Father, we ask you, Lord, to open our eyes and open our ears to see and to hear what you are saying to us and showing us. That in these areas, Father, Lord, that we could be free from them. We ask you to show us where they have entered in and show us how to forgive and show us, give us the grace now, Lord, to be set free in the name of Jesus Christ. So number one is, I feel like on top of the list is self-hatred. When you've had people reject you in the past and speak negative things over you, this happens a lot of time with a parent that's abusing their child verbally, you know, or a sibling, or a good friend who you thought was a good friend, and they speak things against you. In fact, they, they gossip about you and speak negative things about you. And if you take it to heart, you will begin to, and you don't know any better, you'll begin to look at yourself with self-hatred. And it will manifest in your life in fear, anxiety, worry, doubt, anger. I mean, the list is, the list is endless, right? Self-abuse, yes, I got that in here too. We've got to understand that God does not want us. He, you know, it, people say, well, you, you, you should die. Yeah, we're supposed to die, but it says we're supposed to love people as we love ourselves, too. So you have to see that the, there's two edges of the sword. Yes, we're supposed to take up our cross and die. Our old carnal nature, fleshly nature is supposed to die. But we're also supposed to love ourselves, because you can't love someone else if you don't love yourself. That's what marriage is talking about that too. You know, the two become one flesh, and you don't hate your flesh. So why are you yelling at your wife, right? We have to think about these things, you know. I mean, I've seen it so much in marriage counseling where the husband begins to be angry. I've had these mistakes myself and begin to say things to the wife that, that, are hurtful. And why in the world does a husband want to do that? It's because it's the way he views himself. Because there's pain in his heart. And so he speaks those things in anger. You know, it's just like a, a, it's like a domino effect. One person hurts another person. That person experiences the pain. They go out and hurt another person. And it begins to multiply until the shock absorber of Jesus Christ comes into the mix. And God wants you and I to be set free so that we can be the shock absorbers in this society. We are going to need it because there's a lot of pain out there. There's a lot of hurts. There's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of abuse. There's a lot of bitterness. There's a lot of, you can fill the books with all the works of the flesh that are happening and beginning to accelerate in our day as the days get darker. Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But not us. 
We're called to arise out of it. So that's what we're talking about. Okay. That was a long one. Second one is bitterness and resentment. I see that a lot. I see that a lot in people, especially in women, I should say. Uh, and I'm going to say it because men are more aggressive um, and tougher, but women, they hold it in. And it seems like if you don't let the Lord open you up and take your bitterness and resentment, it's just going to plague you. It's going to give you pain. It's going uh, it's to oppress you, put you into bondage. But the good news is Jesus died for it so that you could be free. Amen. And this doesn't make women worse than men. In fact, it's, you know, like we, could, we could rail on men all day because men, men are the abusers most of the time, right? I mean, because men are the pursuers of the women, and, and it gets corrupted with the enemy and the devil. And they, it becomes selfish and lustful, and men take advantage of women. And, and us men, we have to recognize that. He tells us to dwell with our wives with understanding. It means we've got to humble ourselves. And love the wife. She needs love. We need respect. It goes both ways. Women, you need to respect the men. Respect your husbands. They die for you. Okay, verse uh, number five, not verse, uh, number four is pred. I'm sorry, I'm going, getting too fast here. Whoa, beep, beep, back the truck up, as they used to say. Number three is anger. And I've mentioned a lot about anger now. If you constantly get an angry, there's, there's, there's some things that need adjusting in your life and in your heart. And it could be because you've been rejected. It could be because you've been abused. And you've got trauma from that deep down in your heart. Prejudice. And this goes many different ways. Prejudice against gender. Women hating men. Men hating women because you've been hurt in the situation, maybe many times by different men or different women. Prejudice against leaders or leadership, or you've been hurt by a pastor, or you've been hurt by a leader, you've been hurt by a whoever, you know, this is somebody, a boss. And race, prejudice against race. Number five, discouragement. This is another negative side effect. Discouragement. The spirit of Leviathan many times can, can set you up to twist things and then can bring discouragement in. Then depression is another one. Suicidal thoughts even. Self-pity. And then we come to pride. And I got here to protect oneself because I've seen it many times when someone's had been abused, particularly by a father, and they have this pain in their life, and they can't deal with relationships, they end up with pride, you know? I got to be successful. I got to do all these things, you know? And I can't let anybody see the, who, who my dad told me I was because that, I'm trying not to be that, that no good that my father told me I was. And so we cover it up with pride. Pride, you know, it's like, yeah, me, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, I've am i got it together. And when you don't inside, it's fake. The next one is um, self-centeredness, feeling deserving to indulge in our flesh to numb the pain. And that can be in so many different areas. Um, we'll get into some of that in 11 and 12. Number 11, oppression. We can be oppressed by evil spirits. Number 12 there's a negative side effect of surrendering to being abused, both physically, sexually, and mentally. If you've been abused in any of those areas, the enemy wants you just to say there's no hope, and you just blank out, and you just allow people to abuse you. It could be in a, a relationship. It could be in a uh, you just, it could work situation where you're constantly being put down instead of standing up. And, you know, I could get personal here, and I probably need to. In our first 20 years of our marriage, I was busy with business trying to, trying to provide for the family, you know, and I was just working real hard, and I thought that's the way I should serve my family is work all these extra hours and make this money. 
And when I would get home, I'd be tired. And I'd be exhausted. And I would, I would just turn the TV on and zone out. And I didn't help my wife one bit, and it let her down. And, it, and even it got to the point where she would ask me to help and do these things, and I would, that spirit of Leviathan rose up within me and tried to twist things and say, well, you, no, I'm not wrong. I've worked hard, and I've just got to lay down and sit down, and you should serve me kind of thing, you know. Well, one day she started speaking up because God began to speak to her heart, and it opened my eyes to see that. Spirit of Leviathan. Then I had a trance, too, where the Lord showed me that hole in my side, if you remember that testimony, and I saw a woman's hand covering it, and I woke right up out of the trance. I was, it's like I was on the, on the couch, and just like, whoa. I said, what was that? Ask your wife, the voice said, Holy Spirit, and I did, and she said, I know what it is. It's the Spirit of Leviathan, where I would twist things. We'd go round and round, and I would always try to point it back to her to make her be the one that was wrong. When I had things I had to deal with from my past, and I didn't even realize it, God began to heal me of, of rejection in my past, of bitterness that had rose up because of it, feelings of failure, which drove me to a performance to try to do my best I could to make up for the deficit I felt in my own heart instead of being at peace the way God made me. It's getting so much better now, though. <sighs> Substance abuse will hide our pain in drugs or alcohol. Again, it's an escape from pain. And then there's sexual sins, promiscuity, pornography, immorality. It all is just a place where we just begin to surrender to numb the pain in our lives. You ever heard it put that way? When, the, the, when Jane and I went through that series, we began to understand that many times pornography and immorality and promiscuity is a place to just numb yourself from the pain that you have from your past. Okay? Y'all y'all with me? Okay. Violence is another negative. Mistrust. Some of us mistrust one another because we've been hurt. We've been, we've been, we've got pain in our hearts, so we don't want to have that pain again. And then there's fear of all types, including anxiety and worry. And then there's shame. We feel shamed because of what we've experienced in the rejection or in the abuse or whatever you have gone through. Then there's unworthiness. We just feel unworthy. We feel guilty. And then lastly, there's a poverty spirit that can come on us in finances and in low self-esteem and in an impoverished spirit and mind. So that's a lot. And I know that as we're reading this list, God is speaking to some of us that these are areas in our life that we need to deal with. Okay? Like I said, majority of it probably isn't your fault. But when you, don't, when you hang on to it or don't deal with it, you're responsible then. God gives you the responsibility to lay these things at his feet and let him touch you. Let him heal you. Let him deliver you. Let him set you free from all the things in your head that are just swirling thoughts, you know, with all these negative things that we mentioned. And Satan and his demons, they work their dark schemes under the above names that I just listed. Ephesians 6 tells us that we don't fight against human flesh, but against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world. So once we are repentant and have renounced the root sins of all of our rejection, pain, and trauma, then we submit to God, resist the devil, and he what? He has to flee, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's James 4, 7. So this is true for even the curses and all the demons that have come through our heritage, such as our parents, grandparents, and so on. Ancestral curses, ancestral devils that get passed down. When we cast out demons in the name of Jesus, they have no choice but to leave us. Spirit of Leviathan had to go. 
and it left. I'm telling you, didn't it, Jane? And, and I still had some mind renewing to go through, and I really believe I'm still going through it. And I'm just going to be vulnerable to you. Pride will take us away from a place where God can actually heal us. I don't, want, oh, I don't want to admit all my faults. I don't want to admit where I'm at, you know, really, in reality. That's another demon of itself. So when we cast out demons, they got to obey. We then, we got to keep ourselves full of the word of God after that and full of the Holy Spirit. Or the devils will come back with seven more, right? And we'll be worse than we were the first time. So now, I want to come to the scripture God gave me last week. 2 Corinthians 4.1 says, Therefore, since we have this ministry, that's the ministry of Jesus' forgiveness, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame. How many would, would like to have your life exposed on the screen like David's did? How many of you like to, everybody to know all the things you did wrong? Well, God's not going to do that. He's already got enough examples in Scripture. Praise God, right? <laughs> but he wants us to begin to separate ourselves from who we were. Even if we have fallen as a Christian, he says the wise get back up after they fall seven times. But the foolish man just falls into mischief and he stays there. God wants you and I to take him up on his word that he says he will cleanse us. He will forgive us. He'll take away the iniquity, the shame that's associated with our past mistakes. It doesn't matter what you have done. God forgives. That doesn't mean we don't have a consequence in this life, obviously. Okay? But... We have been declared free. And as this life is such a short vapor, soon we'll be standing before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he'll say, come on in. You trusted me. You believed in me. All those things are passed away. If anybody mistreats my daughter or my son here, they're going to have to deal with me. You hear me? God doesn't think like people. He washes, and he washes sins away. He washes it away. But we have to renew our minds. We have to separate ourselves from the rejection, from the pain, and from the trauma that we've experienced in our lives. We have to separate ourselves from our own mistakes even because he heals, he forgives. He cleanses us with hyssop, with the blood of Jesus Christ. He sprinkles it all over us. And God looks at us, and he sees the blood of Jesus Christ. Wow. The best deal in the world. So now we come to the place where we need to pray, and we need to renounce all pain, rejection, and trauma, and then take authority over Satan and all demons. So I want you to pray this prayer with me, okay? I know it may not feel like it applies to you right now, but pray this prayer for someone else, okay, that you may know. So pray this prayer with me. I'm going to read and you repeat after me, okay? We're going to do this right now. You ready? Dear Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ with my pain. Rejection and trauma. Some of it has been my fault. And much of it has been the fault of others. But all of it has been because of the result of sin. I'll parse this shorter, make it easier. You came to free me from sin and death and its effect on me. You came to heal me of all my pain, both spiritually mentally, and physically. This day I renounce all shame and darkness that is associated with my pain, my rejection, and my trauma, even the hidden shame and darkness that I don't fully understand. I ask for forgiveness 
for any bitterness or any anger or resentment that I have had toward you and towards others because of what I have suffered. Today, I confess that I am in Christ a new child of God. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'll say that again. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Today I settle in my heart not to go back to the place of pain, but to allow you to heal me this day and in the days ahead of all of my hurts, all of my pains, all of my fears, all of my rejection, and all of my trauma. From this day forward, I commit to praising you and thanking you when thoughts from the past come to my mind. I commit to having a thankful heart during all my future struggles. If I fail to have victory, then I commit to getting back up and continuing to fight with your love and your power, with full integrity of heart and of soul. I commit to study your words that are written down for me in my Bible so that I might be strengthened and equipped to fight spiritual battles in the days ahead. I also commit to spending time with other believers so that they might encourage me and so that I might encourage them. And mostly, I commit to continually receive your love and to love you in return. And now upon the confession of my sin and the sins of others against me, I speak to every demon that has oppressed me to leave my mind and my body right now in Jesus' most powerful name. Amen. Amen. I'm sticking to my notes on purpose because this is the way God gave it to me, and you can go back on the notes and reread them. And if you need to pray it again, pray it again. The, the widow went to the ju unjust judge over and over and over again until the unjust judge gave her what she wanted. So if you don't feel like you've got results, go back and do it again. Go through the whole teaching. So staying free, now that we're set free from the pain of rejection, pain and even trauma caused by the events, then we must fill our hearts with the Word of God, right? The Spirit of God through studying the Word, through praying, worshiping the Lord who delivered us. When the pain or trauma tries to come back, and this is key, okay, we must begin to thank the Lord and worship Him in our hearts and in our minds. When we do this, it creates a wall so that the pain or the trauma cannot return. The more you do this, the fainter the lies of the pain and the trauma will be heard. Believe me, it works. And you'll have to have complete, you'll, you'll end up having complete and total victory. The Lord will begin to renew our minds as it says in Romans 12, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Every day is going to be brighter and brighter until the full day when Jesus comes to restore all things. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the victory that is in your blood. We thank you for the word, God, that, that resides within us in the spirit of God. 
I pray, Father, that you begin to teach us this, Lord, so that the enemy has no advantage over us. Give us the strength we need, Father, to walk in freedom, to tell the trauma, to the rejection, and the pain to go to the pit where it needs to be. You have lifted us out of the miry clay, Lord. You have set us on a rock, God, the rock of Jesus Christ. And help us to have faith to believe that, Lord, today. Because it's everything you gave to us, everything you promised us, and it's in your blood. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.